Hello everybody, and this is Abundant, and today I'm going to show you guys how to do a simple C4D signature within Photoshop CS6. Now you don't have to have Photoshop CS6, you can have CS5, CS4, or really I would use CS, uh, CS4, CS5, or CS6, not anything lower than that, because I think after CS3, uh, most of the tools and adjustments and the... Uh, mainly the tools in Photoshop change. <clears throat> so as you can see here I already have my render and my canvas already open. Um, I have a 500 by 300 and it's a yeah 500 by 300 pixel. Uh, I did a transparent background and then added a black background behind my render so I could see if there was any white lines on it some or you know I, I want it to be high definition don't want that white line. Uh, on the outside of the render. So once you have all that open, oh, and the resolution 72 and an 8 bit color mode. Hey, look at that, my color scheme. <laughs> Errors. Um, sorry about that. So once you have your render and everything done, and you got it into your canvas, as you can see, these are the three primary, uh, um, C4Ds and uh, Meta Balls, I think, that I'll be using. If I'm wrong, correct me. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to place all my C4Ds into my render, and then I'm going to resume the video for you guys. That way we can speed this up, have it in one part. You guys don't have to click 50,000 times on different parts of the video. Uh, so what I'm going to do is once that's done, once I'm done, and I resume the video, we're going to step on to the next step in this tutorial. Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm done putting all my C4Ds into my signature. Now, um, there are a few areas that I left uh, you know, uncovered. I'm going to fix right now. I just noticed that, uh, as you can see, around the hand right here, I want to fix that. I want to make it look like he is coming somewhat out of the uh, out of the um, uh, C4D that's in the background. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it probably, if I can get this to place right, hopefully an error don't come up on my computer again, which it probably will because that's what my computer is known for. Um, I just had it right. Um, geez, I say I say um a lot. Uh, oh, there we go again. Oh, God. You know what? I'm just going to put it right there. Looks like crap, but oh well. Um, so once you have that done, uh, I do not recommend you apply your image, because once you apply your image, then if you go 15 steps ahead, you won't be able to, uh, you know, redo anything. You'd have to delete all the applied images, and it, it would just be such a hassle. So, uh, I really don't apply any of my images at all. I don't. And if I do, what I do is I make sure that my render is the only thing that is there. But I'm going to try not to apply any images to the final steps in this video. So once you have all your C4Ds in, you're going to want to add a little bit more effect. So we're going to have, uh, I'm going to add some uh, bubbles. If you don't have bubbles, I will post a couple links, not even post, I will put a couple links in my description for you guys that I think would be really good bubble uh, C4D packs. If you disagree and you want to use your own, then go right ahead. Uh, we're going to hit Control O or go to File Open to open up our folder. Um, I don't have a lot of bubbles because I really don't use a lot of bubbles in most of my signatures, um, as you can see. So we're looking for something that has multicolors, something that goes with the background, something like like these right here, like this one and this one, there's multicolors. Or you can even use single color ones like these and then, you know, combine them, make them look cool. But I'm going to use this because I'm going for a multicolor type signature here. It's a new style I've been trying to work with. Um, everyone's, most people I've seen do tutorials, they... They take their bubble C4D and they scroll it all the way down so it's like this small. You can barely see any of the... It's like that. Not even like that. It's like like that. How are you supposed to get any effect from something like that? 
you're not supposed to do it that small. You're supposed to do it small, but not small enough to where the user has to fucking squint his eyes, excuse me for my language, to just see it. Like that. That That's nice. And then you just, you know, you remove the bubbles that look like they're cut off. And you got a perfect placement. Not even a per. That's not even a perfect placement. I'm just, you know, you know what I'm saying. Y'all get me. Hopefully. Uh, then we're gonna duplicate that, and we're gonna want to move it somewhere else. I don't want to. It looks like, as you can see, you can see where the bubbles are being cut off. I'm gonna just rotate it so it's not that badly cut off. There we go. And if you don't like the colors, you can switch them, but I really don't use any adjustment color switches until close to the end, or I just press Control u on one layer and do the hue and saturation by itself, but we're going to go for kind of a multicolor here. So once you have that done, you want to create a new layer, grab your brush tool, and maybe bring it up to about a... Uh, a one, a one nineteen, that'll be good. They want to see if, if you look in your signature, you have all these bright colors, like these bright cyans, the bright blues, the bright pinks, the bright purples. And uh, this is a, a thing I do in all my signatures. I'll grab a color, maybe between green and blue, to get that, and then I'll go down to like a dim color, somewhat on the bright side. Set my layer to color dodge, and then what I'll do is I'll, it, it, you can already see what it's doing. It's brightening up those areas that I think are nice, like that, like that, and brush uh, right there on the neck, right on the head, turn that a little green on the face. If you get to an area where it doesn't look right, you can just, you know, erase it or back it up. But I'm doing this because I think it looks nice already. Now, once you have that, you're going to want to add a little bit more, so we're going to go back over here try and find another color maybe between the pink and purple um, and then you're gonna want to bring your brush up just a little bit bigger maybe a 141 and then go into the areas like here here and there I'll try that those areas and set to linear dodge um yeah no see there you go put it like that now that you have all that done, you're going to want to burn your layer. Now, most people say the only way to burn a layer is by applying an image, which is true. So we're going to... I'm breaking my rule here. I'm breaking my rule, but we're getting close to the end of the signature. So you want to hit Control, Shift, Alt, E, apply that all those images, and turn your... Uh, make sure you take the two layers that you did the, uh, the brushes on and put them above your applied image. Make sure they're not a part of your applied image. Turn them off then. Uh, take your burn tool and uh, make sure I'm on the right layer here. And at a 65 soft brush mid tones 50 exposure with protect tones on, you're going to want to dim all the dark areas. You want to give it some depth in those little dark areas. Um, I hear. I've been told that to add a little bit more depth, you take it, you go to like shadows, and you you do this, and what it does is it gives it a little bit more darkness and depth, and I don't think so. Actually, yeah, wow. Um. <laughs> all right. So after you do that, you want to take your burn your dodge tool on. We'll try highlights in this one, and just brush over those bright areas you don't want to make them too bright if they get to the point where they're too bright as you see highlights only hits areas where it's going to be highlighted then we're going to go back to midtones midtones and go back over some of the other areas like here here there 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 okay and then turn back on your other two layers and there you go now that's your signature I'm kidding that's not it. What we're going to do is now we're going to do our adjustments. I've been told that it's bad to open up a P another PSD in a tutorial, but I think 
it's nice because people say you shouldn't drag your adjustments from one signature to another signature it doesn't work well and you know it just it duplicates the effect but if you're known for one effect on every single signature and everyone loves that type of effect on every single signature then you should stick with that effect I'm known for smudge signatures. Most people that I talk to that are friends with me, they love my smudge styles. They, they, I'm not really good with C4Ds. That's why I've been trying to st step back from smudge and step forward with C4Ds to get better. That way I can handle two types of styles. So you're going to want to go to this right here, your adjustment button. I don't know what you call it. Call it what you want. And you're going to want to go to gradient map. And these three I use in most of my signatures. Sometimes I only use two, sometimes I only use one. But we're going to try and find something that... No. Um, I want to bring out the, the color color in it. We'll try this one right here. And I will post the color codes. Or I'll do an, an, an annotation or something that shows the color codes. Or I'll take a screenshot. I'll do something so you guys know the color codes on it. And the mode we're going to want to set, you're going to want to experiment with, find a nice color mode for it, something that's not too bright. This one I might not use because I can't, I haven't seen anything I like so far. No, I don't like, oh, no. Let's try this one. And go back up to normal, go through each of these, see if we can find something. That's mm, no. I may not use any of my pre-made ones because I can't find anything that goes with it. I'm sorry, guys. This is taking so long. I'm gonna pause the video here, do my effects, and then I'll review over the effects that I did on my uh, signature. So, um, I'm gonna play some music for you guys while this is paused, and I will be back. Okay, guys, I'm back, and I've already added my, uh, there we go. I've added my, um, effects to my signature. I removed the applied image, as you can tell, because it was, when I put my, uh, my effects in, it made it too dark, and it was just, bleh. So, I think I only have, like, three minutes left on this video before I hit that 50 minute mark because I'm probably not going to be able to have it high definition if I go over 15 minutes I apologize so we have that already um I'm gonna right now the depth looks nice there's nice depth uh, you can see where the render is and everything so uh, we're gonna go and since we're at the end of our signature I'm going to do some clipping mask we're gonna go apply uh, alt shift alt e shift shift control alt e to apply our image go to new image um, if you have, uh, like, splatter brushes, you can use them, but I, uh, when I do, uh, I'm trying to get through this quick. When, um, when I make any type of, uh, signature that has, uh, um, clipping masks in them, I use custom objects, like, in the shape tool, I use X's and squares and weird objects and stuff. So, um, we're gonna go right here, make it about that big. Make it any color. You can make it purple. You can make it black. You can make it green. Don't matter. And what we'll do is turn it off. We're going to apply our image again. Oh, we're going to apply our image again. Bring it above. Turn the clipping mask layer back on, or turn the bomb layer back on. Right click the top. Do create clipping mask, and pull this right there. Do uh, maybe one or two more. Make it a little bit bigger. Go back to your shape tool. Um, we'll do a We'll do a uh, we'll do a squishy star thing here, and we'll put it right maybe right there. Then turn the layer off. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna delete that shape. I don't know why it's there. Um, once again, apply image, bring it above your layer, turn it on, clipping mask, and just this gets repetitive. I'm only gonna do it here. I'm not gonna explain how to do it again since I already said it twice um okay and once that's done you can do more clipping max if you want if you find a dark area where you want to put a little bit more color you can um 
then we are going to go to our oh nope apply image once more so you have a final apply image over it then go here go to photo filter and go through each of these um we'll do that one bring out the purples a little bit uh do another photo filter and do a blue probably uh, not too, no, turn down the, uh, right there. Okay, guys, and that's it for this tutorial. I'm sorry that I didn't get the text in. Um, I really do apologize. I'm trying to get these videos in the one part. Um, so if you liked the video, uh, tell me what I missed in it. Tell me what you think I should add in the next video. Uh, tell me if you want to see more speed arts, uh, anything. Uh, thank you for watching, and, uh, hope to see you guys at the next video. Abundant out. Yeah.